this week in the field, an update on my filter system, and a question about photographing peers. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. Now, today is a Q&A episode. Now, if you've watched any of my videos before, chances are you've heard me tell you I love getting questions. And it's true because questions, I think, really drive us to learn more about our photography. And it works both ways. You, know, you ask a question that's going to force me to think about my photography, I'm going to learn something. And hopefully my answer is going to help you out. You're going to learn something, you know, so everybody wins. And so uh, what I wanted to do today is go through a couple of questions that I'd gotten over the last few weeks and, uh, you know, share some things. One had to do with filters and one had to do with composing a, a photograph of a peer. So let's get started. First question came from Carol and she asked me about my filter system. I, I made some videos about my filter system uh, about a year ago or so. And one of the things I wasn't certain about was that I have a certain gap, a space, and if that was going to be cause a problem with light leaks or anything. So um, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So I use Format High Tech for uh, my filter system. Really happy with it. Uh, I can't speak highly of it enough. And so I have a circular polarizer, like many landscape photographers do. The way that their polarizer works is you, you end up with you know, your mounting bracket, which is standard, a little bit of a, a sleeve, like a ring, that the polarizer screws into. Now that mounts on here and it mounts pretty much permanently. Uh, you know, yes, you can unscrew it and so forth, but I wouldn't want to be fiddling around with that in the field. So what I did is I left myself a gap where I could slide in one piece of glass. So let me grab that here. So if I'm shooting and I need the polarizer, but then I want to cut more of the light, I can take the glass and slide it in behind my polarizer. So I can still adjust the polarizer as I need it and get the extra help from another neutral density filter to slow down my shutter for whatever reason that I need to. And now the question came in, or at least my own question to myself was, well, now I have this, you know, this, this space, there's this gap here. And is that going to cause any types of problems with light leak or, you know, messing up the polarization, giving me any types of flares and so forth, because I don't have a, you know, a, a, a solid, piece of metal or covering here? Uh, well, the, the answer is uh, no, I haven't had any problems. And mainly the thing that I do is make sure that I rotate the entire ring, not just the polarizer, I should say the, the holder, the entire holder, so that this gap is not pointing toward the sun. There's solid here and there's solid here. There's like, you know, just hunks of metal and plastic. And so let's say uh, if I was shooting at high noon, I might use a polarizer for that. Well, I would position it so this little screw thing is up toward the top, pointing up toward the sky. This is all solid. I won't have that light leak happening through here. And the same thing as if the sun is on my left shoulder or my right shoulder, I rotate it this way so that I'm blocking the sun from entering in from the sides. So that's all working great and uh, it's been really helpful. Now, I will point out, too, that because I keep the polarizer fixed on this particular mounting bracket, because I don't want to be messing around with taking the filter, the, the polarizer off and on out in the field because of this other plastic ring, I have two filter holders. These are inexpensive, um, $20, $25 just for the, you know, this, this hunk of metal and plastic slides. And so if I only need to use neutral density filters, I just take this out of my bag and slide in pieces of glass. If I need to use the polarizer, I'll take this out. And if I need an extra slow down on my shutter, I have a slot for the extra glass there. So that's the, the update. Very happy with Format High Tech. Can't speak better about them. Uh, they don't pay me to say that. I'm not a sponsored by them. Although if you're watching Format High Tech, you know, give me a call, reach out. Wouldn't mind hearing from you. And Carol, I hope that answers your question. One more question today from Bruce. And he asked about compositions for photographing a pier that's reaching out into the ocean. So uh, he was going to be at a particular pier you know, near sunrise. It wasn't one of those days where the sun was going to come filtering through the pier or align with it or something like that. He's looking for recommendations about you know, how to go about composing it. They have a, have a stretch of beach, the pier reaches out in the ocean. You know, what are my options? 
So I thought what I'd do here is I'll show you a few of the photos that I've taken of peers over time and a couple of the compositions that I seem to uh, to gravitate toward. They, they work for me. And so um, I'd group these into, you know, like you know, two or three different uh, categories. You know, one is just symmetrical. I'll, I'll pick this one right here where you get either underneath the pier or you get on top of the pier and you just have it reaching out into the ocean. Drag the shutter a little bit so that the ocean gets a little bit smoother and the shot becomes about the pier. The thing about these ones is you really need to pay attention to your symmetry and do the best you can because oftentimes the piers themselves aren't symmetrical. Like this pier, this is Scripps Pier in San Diego, it is not symmetrical. I made sure to get this part looking as centered as possible, but you'll notice there's gaps here that don't exist here. This is smaller than here. That's just how the pier is. It's not uh, a matter of aligning yourself or misaligning yourself. Uh, you just have to make a choice and do the best that you can with the pew you get. Uh, another um, compositional technique I'll use a lot are I'll call the triangles. And so this one is a good example of that, where you go either to the north or to the south of the pier and shoot back toward it and use the pier crossing the frame from, in this case, left to right, but also the line of the shore doing kind of the opposite. And so we end up with our eyes going this way and then this way, and then you hit the horizon, you go here. I got a little bit lucky with some clouds. Maybe those drag us back across the other way. If the sky were a little more interesting that morning, maybe that would have uh, grabbed attention a little bit more. But so your, your viewer's eye zigzags its way through the frame. One other example of that is um, you know, the triangle angle is this one with uh, reflections, where the triangle is kind of here, this, this space right here. And you know, it's certainly giving a, a hefty glow on this. This is you know, definitely silhouetted. Uh, and, and soft, but you know, it's reaching out, it's clearly drawing the viewer into the scene, almost into this you know, dark abyss. But with a long exposure, we get some of the reflections happening of the pier in what ends up being smoothed out ocean water. So again, creating that triangle shape, that's, um, I, I, I tend to like that, and lining it up so this triangle almost gets bisected by the horizon. A third idea is uh, appear as context not being the main part of your shot. And this photo here is a good example of that. There happened to be some interesting rocks on the beach this day, and I photographed this pier a bunch of times. Well, what could I do differently? And in this case, made the pier go in the background. And this happened to be a very gray day, so um, this one was a, a good option for you know uh, not so great weather conditions. The pier's in the shot, and if it's uh, in a location that is either iconic to either your local community or some type of peer that is you know known the world around having it be contextual in the scene it gives your viewer an idea of where they are where they'd be standing but it's not all about the peer it's more about the scene as a whole and then one other idea is just the peer itself and i have two examples of this one that's not good which is this one and this was one of my earlier photos and it's not a good composition, right? Okay, it's just the pier. It's going straight across the horizon left to right, but it's, it's pushed very high in the frame. And I don't think that works as well. You know, the, the, the waves are, are okay, they're interesting, but they're not, you know, it's not some large gigantic wave that's, that's really grabbing attention. You know, contrast that with this photo, which I've only taken quite recently. Uh, the pier is much more prominent uh, using a whole lot of negative space here. Again, one of those you know empty sky type mornings. And uh, just the, the fact of where the pier is positioned in the frame, I think makes this a stronger photo. So, um, so uh, Bruce, th those were the ideas. I know we talked about these in email, but um, hopefully I've recapped these well. And uh, it helps out anyone else who's going out to photograph a pier, or it could be a, a jetty, or anything that reaches out into a body of water. It could be on the ocean, could be on a lake. Uh, Hopefully this will give you some ideas about how to compose in the future. For tip of the week, I think I'm going to say triangles. You know, using angles through your compositions to create triangles. Those might end up being zigzag patterns to visually guide your viewer through the scene, or it might be a, a, just a shape of a triangle with either you know, light and shadow or a reflection, whatever it might be. Those are uh, good shapes to target when you are composing up your landscape photos. That'll do it for this week's In the Field. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you did, let me know somehow. Tell a friend and share this with someone else in your photography world. 
Uh, I, I love to see that our little corner of the internet's growing. And uh, you know, everyone that comments on the videos, it's all it's all very positive. And I really like that because I, I, I hope that we're all learning together. I can promise you that I am. And hopefully you're getting something out of these videos as well. So let me know. Helps me come back to the desk week after week. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting. Why did I think when I said photographing Piers, this image of Piers Morgan just popped into my head? Well, that'd be cool to have him on the show. Or, well, maybe not. Maybe him in a landscape.